Now how does the correction step look like? Now remember in the general formulation of the base filter, our new belief was computed by weighting our predicted belief by the probability of the measurement given the state. And we had to normalize this. Now in the particle filter, this is implemented as follows. For every particle, we give the particle a weight, which is the probability of our measurement given that our state is exactly our predicted particle. And so this is the same as that. And this weight is also called the importance factor. Now after this step, we have computed a weight for each predicted particle. But finally, our distribution has to be represented by particles and not by weighted particles. And so here comes what is known as importance sampling. We set up a new set of particles. So we start with the empty set and then we run a loop in which we draw n new particles. And the trick here is to draw an index, say i, with a probability proportional to the weights of the particles. So in each iteration, we draw one index and then we add the corresponding particle to our new set of particles. We pick the particle with index i from our set of predicted particles. And drawing i is done with replacement. And the effect of this is as follows. Say we have three particles and so they all move, then they are all sampled and then we have some measurements and according to the measurements, say the probability for this particle is very high, so it gets a high weight. Whereas in the other cases, the measurements do not fit very well to what we expect. So those two cases get low weights. Then in the important sampling step, we will have the weight one and weight two and weight three. And so weight one will be large and the others will be small. And now we will sample three times. Maybe we'll get those values. And so we pick two times index one, meaning we will have two particles which are identical, we will pick index two as well, one particle, and we will drop the third particle. Now the only complicated step is the important sampling. So once again, important sampling draws m new particles with replacement from the set of our predicted particles with probability proportional to the weights. Now before the sampling, our particles approximate our predicted belief, but after sampling, they approximate our posterior belief. In general, the result will contain duplicates. And since we keep the number of particles constant, this also means that particles with a low weight will likely disappear. And this is necessary because this ensures that we do not waste particles in areas where our belief is very small. Now important sampling is a general technique where the weights have to be selected proportional to our target distribution divided by the proposal distribution. And in our case, this means our target distribution is our belief, whereas our proposal distribution is our predicted belief. And so as we know, this is alpha times the probability of a measurement given the state times the predicted belief divided by the predicted belief. And so we see our weight can be chosen to be the probability of the measurement given the state. And this factor is of no importance because the weights don't have to be normalized. Now let's compute this probability of a measurement given a state. Now say our robot is here, looks into that direction and from its scan, it sees a landmark here. And this alpha and D, these are the measurement values that are obtained from the laser scanner measurements. Now say the real position of the landmark is here. And so according to the state of the robot, the correct bearing should be alpha prime and the correct distance should be d prime. And so we say the probability for our measurement given our state x is the product of the probability for the distance difference and the probability of the difference in the angle. And we model those by normal distributions. So we use the probability density function for both of these probabilities where this is the Gaussian probability density function which we used earlier. And we will have to do this for every landmark. So since we have six landmarks in our arena, we may have up to six probabilities for landmark measurements. So these formulas actually compute the probability of one landmark measurement. And we will assume independence of the probabilities of those landmark measurements so that finally our probability of all the measurements given the current pose is just a product of the single probabilities. So in order to compute the overall probability of the measurements for a fixed pose, so for a certain particle, all we have to do is to loop 
over all detected landmarks. And for each detected landmark, you compute the probability of the measurement, which in turn is decomposed into the probability for the distance measurement and the probability for the angle. And then we form the product of all those probabilities. So this is all there is to do. Now, when implementing this, the first step is to detect the cylinders. So in our robot's coordinate system, the robot does this measurement and using some thresholds computes this alpha and distance values that we need to compute our weight. Now, fortunately, we have programmed all that functionality before because we used that already, for example, in the Kalman filter in our last unit. And so all this is done by the function get cylinders from scan, which is in this LAM E library of this unit. And independent of the number of particles we have, we only need to do this step once in every iteration of our filter. And then in the second step, we need to compute the weights. And this is done in a function you'll have to implement. It gets the cylinders and the landmarks. The cylinders are computed by this function. And this does a loop over all particles. Now regarding our robot in the real world, we have this measurement. And now we need to assign this measured position of a landmark to a closest landmark in our arena. And fortunately, we have programmed something similar earlier for our Kalman filter. And this function is provided here as the function assign cylinders. And it takes the cylinders, pose, and the landmarks. And it returns a list which contains all assignments. So in our case, this list contains between zero and six elements. And for each element, it contains the measured distance, d, the measured bearing angle, alpha, and the xy position of the assigned landmark in one tuple. And it contains up to six of those tuples. Now we need to get the predicted alpha prime and d prime. So the predicted angle and distance. And fortunately, we programmed that earlier too, because this is our function h, which takes a state and landmark. So this landmark and the state is the particle and returns the distance d prime and the angle alpha prime. So this is the predicted measurement. And now for each single assigned cylinder, we have to take the actual measurement and the predicted measurement and compute the weight for this single cylinder, which was computed according to this formula. And this is done in the function probability of measurement, which you'll have to program as well. And then remember, this loop is overall particles, but down here you'll have to do a loop overall assigned cylinders. And for each assigned cylinder, you get one probability of measurement, which is your weight probability of measurement i given x. And you'll have to form the product of all that probabilities to obtain your overall probability, which then is your overall weight for the corresponding particle. Now, how does resampling work? We need to draw index i with probability proportional to the weight of the particle i, which we just computed. And so we can do this in the following way. Say these are all the weights and I number them starting from zero for compatibility with your later implementation, then I can draw an index with a probability proportional to the weights by drawing a random number between zero and the sum of all weights. And then after drawing this number, I'll just have to find out the corresponding index, which is two in this case. So in order to find out the correct index, I can just store the accumulated weights as an array of increasing numbers. And so after I pick a number, I can use binary search to find the correct index. And so it becomes clear I can draw m numbers in asymptotic time of m log m. Now we will have a look at a different technique termed the resampling wheel. So imagine I subdivide a wheel according to the weights. Then first I pick an index randomly between 0 and m minus 1. That is in this case between 0 and 3. Say I would pick index 1. Then in addition, I pick an offset randomly from a uniform distribution between zero and two times the maximum weight that I have on this wheel, which in this case would be W2. So I pick a random value and I just find out the corresponding index. So I check if I'm first within W1. And if not, I increase my index here 
and subtract w1 from my offset, so what remains is only this part. Then I check if this part is in w2, which is the case, and so I would pick index 2, and I'm still at that offset. Now I pick a next random number for my uniform distribution, which may be that. I check if I'm within w2, which is the case, so I pick 2 again. I would pick my next random number from my uniform distribution and add this again to my old offset. And so say this would go around here. Then I would check is it within w2. It isn't. So I would increase my index to 3. Now is this remaining offset within w3? It is not. So increase my index. Modulo the total number of particles. So it's back to 0. Is it within w0? Yes it is. So my third pick would be index 0. So to give you a hint, the algorithm looks somehow like this. We first determine the max weight. Then we pick our first index randomly between 0 and m minus 1. And then we pick m indices. We first add a random number to our offset. Then there's a while loop where we have to increment the index as long as our offset is outside our current weight on the wheel of weights. And after we incremented the index 0, 1 or more times, we have to add the new particle. So this is the main structure of the resampling using the resampling wheel. Now here's the program I prepared for you. It's SLAM8B Particle Correction and it combines the prediction you programmed in the previous program with the correction which you'll have to fill in here. So on top you can see it now imports from the SLAM-E library those two functions we talked about earlier and it also imports the normal distribution here which we need later for the probability density function. So the constructor of the particle filter now also takes the standard deviations of the distance and angle measurement. Here's our function g. Here's the predict function. You'll have to insert that from your previous program. Here's the measurement function, which takes a state, or in our case a particle, and the position of a landmark and computes the expected measurements. And this function is a plain copy from our common filter of the previous unit. Then here's the probability of measurement function, which you'll have to implement. It takes a measurement and a predicted measurement and returns the weight. And here are some hints. So in particular, watch out for a proper normalization of the difference of the two angles. And measurement and predicted measurements are both tuples containing a range and a bearing. Now here's the compute weights function, which does a loop over all particles. And so for each particle, it assigns the cylinders obtained from the current laser scan, which is the same for all particles, to the landmarks, given the current pose, which depends on the particle. And given that assignment, you'll have to do a loop over all measurement landmark tuples in this assignment and compute the appropriate weight, which you'll have then to put into a list, which is returned here. And here's the final function. You'll have to implement the resample function. And it is up to you what you do here. But for example, you can do the resampling wheel, which I just explained. And then this is the correction step, which is now very simple. First, we compute all weights and then second we do a resampling based on those weights which gives us new particles which we then assign to the set of our particles which means our old particles are replaced by our new resampled particles. And here's the print particles function we already had in our previous code. Now let's have a look at main. In the main function we now also need the cylinder extraction parameters. We need to set the standard deviations of the distance and angle measurement and these values are just copied from our settings of the Kalman filter in the previous unit. Then we'll have to define the number of particles and initialize them. That is the same as in the previous code. We have to set up the particle filter. That's also the same as in the previous code. We have to read more data because we now need also all the scan data and we need the landmarks in the arena. And then finally here's our loop. It's not much more complicated than our previous loop. If here are our control, here our prediction, then this is the entire correction step. So we extract the cylinders from the scan, which we need to do only once and not per particle. And then we call the correct method of our particle filter, given that cylinders and the reference cylinders, which computes all the weights and does the resampling. Finally, we output all the particles. So now please implement the probability of measurement function, the compute weights function, and the resampling function. And don't forget to put in the prediction function from your previous implementation. 
up here. Now when you run this, it will produce the file particle filter corrected. Now let's load that. And so what you see is a set of particles. And when we move forward in time, they become less. And we will have a look at this later on. And then those 50 particles move along the trajectory and around the corner and so on. And so it's probably best to load the reference trajectory as well. So the particles are placed around our initial point and then they move along the trajectory and here something interesting happens. First of all we see the set of particles gets wider and then we also see that some of the particles seem to take a stronger left turn than the others. And we encountered that problem earlier when we noticed that a too strong left turn at this position might lead to wrong match of the landmarks and in turn to completely wrong trajectory from that point on. Now what we see here is that some of the particles take a stronger turn but they eventually die out and we also see that after a while the set of particles is less spread out and it is more spread out when we don't drive straight which makes sense because we have modeled our noise in a way that differences in left and right motor control lead to a higher noise. Now if you run your code again, you will obtain a different but similar result. Again, here are some particles taking a strong left turn and then dying out and the particles spreading out when we take a turn. You may also try running this with more particles for example, here's a run with 200 particles. So you just set the variable number of particles in main to 200. Let's have a look. Again, the situation with the left turn, the spread when we turn, and again we manage to find a globally correct solution.